Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Section 1.5, 1.6. Uh, this is basically the start of everything we're doing to end this chapter. We're going to start to talk about um, collision theory. Uh, some of you were introduced to it last year in Chem 11, some not. It's not the end of the world. This is the introductory idea to why reactions go fast and why reactions go slow. Um, it all comes down to the fact that for a reaction to take place, the reactants have to collide. They have to smash into each other with a lot of force. Enough force to break the bonds. We're going to dial all this in in the next couple of days. So here's a very simple example. We've got two reactants, H2 and I2, floating around in space, doing their own thing, very happy. If they collide with enough force, they will form this intermediate um, it's not a product, it's not a reactant, it's, it's just an intermediate. It's called an activated complex. We'll write that down later. This is the collision. This is the successful collision. This is when the reaction takes place. If they hit with enough energy and enough force to have a successful reaction, they will form the products. So these are your reactants. They smash together to form um, an intermediate compound, and then they end up forming the products. We can do things to help reactants collide better. The more often they collide with more energy will mean a faster reaction. So the first thing that we can do is change the concentration. The higher the concentration, the faster the rate. Why? Because the higher the concentration means there's more reactants and if you have more reactants they will be able to collide with each other more often you increase the chance of a successful collision. So in box number one, we have a low concentration of both, which means a low chance of collision, which is a slow reaction. Box number two, I increased the number of blue reactants. So yes, I'm helping this reaction um, go forward. I'm increasing th the likelihood of a successful collision. So in box number two, we'll be a little faster. But box number three will be the fastest. I increased the number of blue reactants and red reactants. So now there's a very high chance of a successful collision. And because there's a higher chance of a successful collision, they will, um, the reaction will have a faster rate. So I can change the concentration and it will help collision theory. I can also change the temperature. We know, all the way going back from grade eight, the greater the temperature, the higher the temperature, the molecules will move faster. If the molecules move faster, you're going to have more collisions. And if you have more successful collisions, then you are going to have a faster rate. Keep in mind that temperature has the words exothermic and endothermic attached to it. The graphs we drew last year, we were drawing changes in overall energy of the system. That overall energy we defined as enthalpy. And the change in enthalpy is that triangle. Triangle means change. So if you're exo or endothermic, you're losing or gaining energy. And your delta H will be positive or negative. Here is an exothermic graph. We drew it in our notes the other day. The reactants start out high. The products are low. The delta H um, is negative. If it started off at 90 kilojoules of heat and ended here at 30, this delta H is negative 60. It went down 60. It lost 60 kilojoules of energy. The opposite of that is endothermic. Endothermic has a positive delta H. This reaction needs an input of energy to start. So here are your reactants at, say, 20 kilojoules, and here are your products at, say, 150 kilojoules. An input of energy was required to go from the reactants to the products. So this delta H is positive, and it would actually have a value of 130. It went up 130 um, kilojoules. The graph form is one way to represent a change in temperature, a change in energy. An equation form is more likely. So 
Here's the very simple equation. Reactants, products. It's basically telling you that the delta H is negative 20, so that's exo. This one, it's telling you that it's positive 83, so that's endo. Okay? The first example, it lost heat. It's releasing heat into the environment. The second example, it's gaining heat um, in the system. The environment is cooling down. Another way to show it in, a, in an equation is called a thermochemical equation. Both are equally popular. You're not, not going to say you're going to get one or the other. You're going to see them both. If the heat term right here is on the reactant side, it means there's an input of that energy. In this example number one, there was an input of 201 kilojoules. Input of energy means endothermic. In example number two, the heat term is on the product side, means it released 296 kilojoules of energy. That's exothermic. So a few little details in regards to temperature. Um, all of this is going to play a role in the uh, following lessons and following labs coming up.